right, looks like we're live. I just have to make sure that we uh, get past all these stupid advertisements. Every time. All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here to stream to you because we are WBPL76. I am uh, Stormsong. Ah. With me is Andy Van, and joining us soon will be Wacker. But while we wait for Wacker, I will let you enjoy this, you know, stupid AI art I made of me and Andy scaring the crap out of Wacker. <laughs> We are continuing on Trilby's Notes, the third game in the Chizo Mythos, um, or uh, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Scare the Crap Out of Whacker. Welcome back! Which is funny, because you never worried about that. Indeed. Also, Storm, you're doing it again. What am I doing again? Well, you're not doing it again, that is. What am I not doing again? You're sharing your screen. Oh, right! I need to show my co-hosts what's playing. Yeah. Otherwise, they get yeah, mad at me. I need me. to get the feed switch out, don't I? Possibly. Oh, wait. You like that one. Let me find the other one. No! No! It's just a yes. serrated one with the nice little yellow ribbons at the end. No, not that one. Indeed. That's for later. Oh, goody. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, while we wait for Wacker, we're going to resume from where we were. Um, so, on the last few streams, we met our friend Trilby and all of the horrible experiences he went through at the Defoe Manor. Then we met someone we thought was Jonathan Somerset, and uh, all the experiences he had aboard the spaceship before we found out he wasn't who we thought he was. And now, we're back to Mr. Trilby, huh? I will admit, I will point out that you've made a bit of a continuity error. Yes. You said our friend Trilby. Trilby doesn't have any friends. You make me sad. But yes. Also, so, yes, thank you for your goob. The art drive challenge is RT. Yay! Ooh. Well, let us get the sound on this thing adjusted. I got the specific icons up too. Yes. Okay, I think this one I have to adjust the volume manually in my system here. So, how is chat doing today? Are they chatty? I hope they got their diapers on if they are. Ew. Oh, you said chatty. Okay, tell me how the volume is. Why won't the goob hole take any more goob storm? I don't know. I don't know how to get it to provoke that. <laughs> Note to self, A is not left and right. Right, have to remember that this one is text-based. Clop, 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 yep. clop. Try to tell it to take more of your goob. After all, goob Ow! is a miracle of modern science. We're lucky to have it. We should spend as much of it as we can. Goob is the future. You would not give when I pushed. I saw no direct yep. means of open. Oh, that's right. Um, um. Uh. Your brother has ah. a lot of goob. Uh, it, it, well, he, he, of course he has a lot of goob. He's a businessman, Mom. Oh, yeah, your brother's a businessman. And what do you do all day? You just sit around making music with your little telephone. Ah, I forgot about that. Oh. Ah, Whack Daddy has arrived. Ah. It's the green one. 
Okay, so uh, we are back to the game, as I told the others. And... Oh god, this this is the fucking hotel. The hotel of yep. not good. Yep. Play. Uh, so 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 Wacker, I want you to pull up the stream. Tell me when you have the stream up. I mean, I'm looking at it in both places. Why? Okay, so uh, here's a piece of art that Andy and I had made for this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So that that's for you. <laughs> Who the fuck did this? I I did it. Um. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> back I to the game. I was the ideas guy, you know, the one that says something and other people do the work, and I try to take some credit because of how sad my existence. And wow, what? Hi, hi, yays. Um. Yay. So. Yes, we made that for you, Wacker. <laughs> so you, we actually only just started the game back up. Um, at the moment, we have uh, gone upstairs, and uh, I was trying to get the store over here open, um, and it turns out it it will only unlock if the fire alarm goes off. I remembered I had grabbed matches from the desk, so I lit a match under the uh, fire alarm there. When I did, it set off. Uh, a memory of the room burning when we, uh, when we, you know, tried to put the wraith back into its body, but for some reason the tall man was in the vision standing among the fire. That's this is lovely. This this is a great property. This is a wonderful, happy, magical place where meat happens. Yeah. Hey, uh, storm song. Take crowbar and apply briskly to own forehead. Indeed. Wacker, wacker, wacker sounds like an off-key Pac-Man. What were you saying, Andy? Um, uh, do you think uh, on his way here to get to the hotel, he had to go through a, a dark desert highway? Possibly. Maybe, you know, cool wind through his hair. Yeah. Potentially. Andy, what are you getting at? And ah uh, yes, more of the whispering. What's that girl's name? The redhead girl? Uh, Shabon. Yeah, was she standing in the doorway? Uh, no. Uh. I I am being abused by chat right now. Good. Good. Yeah. I am being abused. By ah, chat. here we are. God damn it, Wacker, we told you. No more tequila sunshine. No. Okay, you're the doctor, remember, Wacker. I no. Also Teletanker and Fez are abusing me. It may be consensual though, because they mm. are my boys. Talk to man. Where did you say the wooden <laughs> idol from Defoe Manor could be found? Remember, uh, you are... Uh... Uh... Said we discuss it after the fair. As far as I know, it's still in the safe in the hotel kitchen. Also, I'm watching the wrong screen. Haha. <laughs> yes, okay, so... That's what our objective is right now confirm our darkest terrible fears oh god i just thought of the best revenge ever for fez oh boy because fez is older than me oh god he's fez senpai <laughs> fez, so fez senpai cares. please notice us fez senpai <laughs> work on that fez <laughs> so was fez there when the roots of the world took hold Possibly. Hmm. It appeared to be also, locked, probably by a deadbolt on the other side. Yeah. Hey! All right, chat. Can you tell me, is that the name of a Transformer? Deadbolt? I bet it is. And if not, I'm taking it. 
So yeah, I realized we need to be in the dark world right now, so we are trying to provoke that at the moment. What, are we trying to provoke meat mode? Yep. There we go. Oh, oh boy, we're we're back. It's it's meat time. It feeds. I I don't like nice teletanker. I don't like meat mode. As I had suspected, the stress proved too much for the ancient crowbar, which bent to uselessness. I discarded it. How the fuck do you bend a crowbar? Like. This motherfucker does not have that level of strength. Hey, look, it's wi it's Wacker's kitchen. Desiccated corpses dangled from the ceiling, left to rot by some warped interior decorator. I mean, it's kind of a nice ambiance. The circle containing four triangles and a square. It was evidence of a paganistic ritual, but the exact nature of them remained a mystery. You see that? Uh, you see that one body that's closest to you? Yeah. It looks at you and then winks and says, What are you doing after the game, cute thing? I'm leaving! <laughs> they always do that. <laughs> I flee for my existence. Oh, right. God, this is such... I, I hate this puzzle. Okay, so... We're gonna have to do this again. Why? Uh, I have to be... Oh, this happy place. The happy room. It hurts. It The <laughs> cloud strife. It Don't... hurts. You know, Wacker, if I ever come to your place, I'm bringing a red marker. No, you're not. A big, fat, no sloppy red marker. Marker zone permitted. It's either the red marker or the purple crayon, Wacker. Oh, I remember what I need now. Yes, there is another item I need, and I forgot. I oh, you're bringing me a snack, Andy? I'm not in the Marines. Neither am I, but... Do you not get the purple crayon reference? Purple crayon reference? Oh, I fucking get it. That's why I commented on it, you dipshit. We got the crowbar. I think I recall us needing to get soda or something. Play some Doom. Yeah, because what we need is, since we have a tranquilizer for making ourselves calm down, to leave the Dark World, if we want to enter the Dark World intentionally, we need some means of entering it on purpose. You need to scare yourself or something? Oh, yeah, agitate yourself or something. Yeah, just the. Oh, yeah, yeah, just uh Yeah, just, just, you know, walk around a while. Okay. The meat will uh, make so, its appearance. So, there I just happen to have the good luck of... Oh, here we are. This is exactly what I was looking for. Take the apple off of the table. Something told me it would be useful. Okay, so... What'd you take? Professor, it was a soda that was sitting over there, the caffeine, in order to agitate myself. Uh, agitate the hell out of my consciousness! Ah, oh, hell no! Uh, Professor Jehal's antique show was sparse, as its small venue would indicate. A couple tables Tomorrow. were laid out with various trinkets, and a charred rocking chair was the centerpiece. Oh no! An ancient shingle from an establishment called the Unicorn was leaning against one of the tables. Didn't they say they rescued that one fucked up painting where the person kept on appearing and disappearing? Yes, uh, and we looked at that last time. That was You had to run out of the room at the moment. Um, okay. And we relived uh, Matthew Defoe's last moments. No, oh, that's lovely. It was a very old make of chisel, rusted and probably very fragile. As the professor had described, the words Sea Angel were carved into the handle. Again, I found myself inexplicably drawn to the artifact. My fingertips were already extending towards it, as if drawn by a magnet. Magnets, man. How's that shit work? All right. Um... A loud buzzing played in my ears, and my vision began to cloud as I reached over and laid my hand up upon the tool. All right, so quick warning to everyone. There's some, uh, how shall we say, 19th century language. 
Oh boy! Uh, now, Wacker, since you're already killed, we'll let you do all the reading. This is no, I'm not gonna read this. 18th century, somewhere in the Atlantic, July 25th, AD 1789. I'm not gonna read it for speed. Mabauta had been a great warrior. In battle, his skill was thought to be unmatched in all of Africa. He had respect, a great house, a slew of beautiful women, children to make any father proud. But through just one mistake, it had all been torn away. His mistake was in standing by his beloved king when the invaders from the coastal kingdom arrived. Now his great house was in ruin, his women raped, his children murdered. And for Mabauta, the worst fate of all, sold to the white men in exchange for weapons, shackled with his fellows in the hold of a slave ship. Mabota was strong. Perhaps he could have lived as a slave, but then came the sickness. A simple fever, no doubt, to be gone the next day. But the white men took no chances and threw him overboard. For days, Mabota drifted, waiting for the black cloud of death to descend. Having lost everything, that he now sought only the embrace of the deep, or of the deep, a welcome end to his life betrayed. But the end did not come then. Oh, uh oh. About a death sec. I'm not touching him. He might have come. You're around, Captain. Voices unfamiliar speaking in unfamiliar language. Mabauta was suddenly terrified that the slavers had returned, but he was as weak as a newborn and could not move or speak. Looks like we picked him up just in time. Didn't know how long he'd have been drifting out here. It can't have lasted much longer. Good lord. Look upon it, men. The greatest evidence we have of humanity's inherent evil. Never forget that man. Or that men. Sailors such as you or I did this. Left this poor wretch to die. Slavers aren't sailors like you or I, Cap'n. No. I do not know those devils can... Or I did not know those devils can have the audacity and still call themselves human. Today, there is no pride in being an Englishman. Find our new passenger some quarters. Make him comfortable. Passenger, Captain? Every innocent who sets foot on my ship is a free man. Is there something about this policy you find questionable? Not all, Captain. Hey, Mad Ducks. No, th these were not slavers. The ship was different, less crowded with terrified black faces. There was anger in the voices of the white men, but not directed at Mabota. Still frightened, but somewhat reassured, Mabota passed out. Oh, yeah. To have been rescued by a ship in these... Or the ship of these good white men had been a fantastic stroke of good fortune. He decided that it had been the will of the gods that he should survive, and that proper thanks would be in order. An idol, that was the answer. If he could just find a suitable wood and a sharp blade, he would carve the finest idol of his life. So, we are beginning to see something. Okay. Ducky. Hello, Ducky. Yes, nerds are doing things. Nerds are always doing things. Whoa. Not always good things, but I, I, I think we're all right, right? Whoa, well, right. some of us, Andy. Yeah, some of us. Both of us turn our head to look at Storm. All right there, Lanny. Oh, I see. You want something to carve with? Yeah. The sailor handed Mabota a sharp, almost brand new workman's chisel. You should bring it back when you finish with it. Hey, Night Owl. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will say that was a bit too, like... Like, that guy must be a mind reader or something like that. Yeah, it's, of course, again, the downshot of this kind of game. Uh, let's see. Unless, you know, he 
he signed. Like he pointed to like the chisel and did his own thing. I, that yeah, that could have been it. Have a good night, Teletank. Good night, Teletanker. Take wood from barrel. Okay, so. Obviously, we're seeing a uh, very reduced timetable here. You think that guy hanging over the edge is, like, just hurling his guts out? Possibly. <laughs> O'Malley Shipping. The wood of the crate seemed ideal for Mabauto's intentions. He decided to leave it here until he was ready to carve the idol. Carve idol. With the chisel and the wood of the crate, Moboto could finally create his offering. After several hours, Moboto was very pleased with the result, a fine rendition of his kingdom's god of fertility and good fortune. Oh. All that remained now was to return the chisel. You recognize it, don't you? What in the What the what The vision faded. I felt myself being hurled forcefully back into the present day. But good whacker. But I mean, okay. All right. That thin, tall creature, a black-clad ghoul. What was its significance to my predicament? Why did it appear again and again throughout history to spread death and horror? Because you'll recall we saw the tall man in the body of uh, John and Matthew's father, Sir Roderick, as he was beating the boy to death. And we saw him in the fire when we lit the match. There was no connection to the idol shape or Mabauta's tribal deities. The tall man was no fertility god. It must have been connected to the wood of that crate somehow. There had been a name on that crate. Mabauta hadn't been able to read it. But I looked through his eyes. Had O'Malley shipping. Could the owner have been an ancestor of Shaban? It was a flimsy possibility, but at that point, my only lead. I resolved to discuss this with Shaban at the earliest opportunity. Mm -hmm. They were blackened, but still recognizable as the manacles from John Defoe's basement in prison. look page i recognized it as being from the same source as the early or as the one under the painting in the lobby victim four the slave the fourth man who desired judgment was the slave who had not been brought freehorn's message and who tormented the wood that was the prince's soul with a sharpened blade the prince came to him and he struck the slave down and he knew the name of the king and the prince said, Not one of your household shall I leave alive. Slave, for thrice now have I brought my warning, and any who still fail to heed shall be named as fool and judged most unworthy in our sight. Finally, I've... Oh, it's you, Terry. Sorry, this is you, Whacker. Uh... I thought you might have been the serving staff at least. Ha 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 ha. Is that wine? Uh, I can't remember how they spell her name in this. I O. Okay. Hmm. We are walking, we hey, are walking with our bowling there's, shoes. There's not any meat. No meat. Yes. Don't worry, there will be plenty of meat. A whole buffet, like who hot. 
How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? I don't want any meat. Trying to remember which room was Shabon's. It's Dr. Chahal's. What you want, Whacker, is a good throngling. Grab the meat. Oh, yes. uh, Mercury, this is not just floor meat. This is all manners, brands, shapes, and species. Shut up, Storm. It's <laughs> the meat that transcends time and space. Oh, oh, yes. This is such an engaging stream for everybody watching. We're so yes. glad Engage yeah. with the meat. And we will begin screaming randomly in a moment. Bread Good star. evening. Bread star. Ah, right. Uh, take pill. Oh boy, Grimby Chan is here. This is her room, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Must be where she live streams from. Andy, no. Uh, no. I said journal and I said it hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. I'm trying to see if I could provoke something there. Um, okay, we are going to take a brief second and I'm going to pull up this guide because... I've never liked when I watched this originally get played. I never oh, liked. Oh, I spelled her name wrong. Stairs. I was gonna tell you how to spell it, and you're like, well, "I'm just walking here." It's okay. I still love you. I'm walking here. Yep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, pro fucking gamers and streamers here. Yes. But how about all of you? Are you all as spooked out as Wacker is? Ooh. Not really spooked out as much as weirded out and grossed out. Disturbed, maybe? Potentially. So we'll have to ask about Siobhan's whereabouts to him. Uh, Grimos, you need to pull up the convention oven. Because oh. convention oven... Oh, speaking of which, hello. Have you seen any of the hotel staff anywhere? Afraid not. Huh. Perhaps they go to bed early in these parts. Ask about the meat. O'Malley. The O'Malley Rally. E. No, ask, oh, just, hmm? Scott's okay. getting drunk ask and... about... You didn't spell it right. Okay. O-M-A L-L-E-Y Ask about O M A L L E Y shipping. Do you know anything about the history of your family? I wouldn't be so much of a history student if I didn't know, would I? I'm researching my family tree as part of my diploma. That's ideal. I appreciate this may sound like an old question, but trust me when I say it's important. Did your family run a shipping company in the late 18th century? This is an odd question, but I do remember reading somewhere about O'Malley shipping. I've had it to check in my notes. I left them in my book bag. Could you meet me in the room up above five minutes? I'm in 2A, next to a bed. Certainly. I'll see you there, then. Indeed. Oh, God, she's got sandals on. 
Is she wearing socks? No. She's gonna step through the meat. <laughs> so she said room 2A, right? Yep. 2A, next to a bed. Not Hi, a I'm bed. A... Schnell, schnell, schnell! <laughs> so, uh, after yesterday's, uh, catastrophe with, uh, all of Garden, um, I, uh, I decided that it was best that we start, uh, preparing war propaganda, so you may see some of that over the coming weeks. Buy war bonds. Send goob to soldiers who need it. We will take the unlimited breadsticks for ourselves. Come in, please, Terry. You have the papers. Must you always get right down to business? Pat's bed. Come on, sit down, let's talk. <laughs> this is how certain videos start. How are you feeling? What were you a little worried about you? I have these <laughs> moments of illness. <laughs> what do you want to have talk about? <laughs> have you stolen any lemons lately? The faux man. Def oh. <laughs> how did you with me? I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. <laughs> it's kind of yours. The one who wants the figurine. What does he know about it? Well, he has an interest in the occult, and there's some nonsense story going around about it. Yeah, Something but... about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. I wasn't really paying attention. Really? I don't remember hearing about that in any of the reports. No, you wouldn't have. It was widely. Have you heard a story of Trilby was in the house? I could feel cold sweat dr uh, drooling down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrating on not giving any outward signs of alarm. As Shaban spoke of my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm. No one believes it, but Simone Taylor insisted it was true right up until, well, you know. She says she saved her from the house. I think that's a little far-fetched. Oh, I will be right back. That's exactly what a bed says. He says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. <laughs> Truth be told, I don't think a bed believes in Trilby any more than he does ghosts. He's so grounded in reality. A sensible attitude. This next part is uh, I kind of won't whack her here for so. Yeah. We're gonna wait for just a moment, and I think you know yeah. why. Yeah. Because as you all know, the secret goal of tonight's stream is um, the swoop. Yeah! Pay the goob tax. It is your destiny. Yeah. Alright, so. Let's see. Sensible attitude? Have you... Have you have you... always been an act attained? Alright. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. We are. We are going to hold for Wacker. You're he antagonizing. Said he, he said he'd be right back. Um. Comes in through the left. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see. Yeah. How do you donate more to the April Art Drive? Oh, you just have to open the thing. Okay. I donated more. April Art Drive? What's that? I actually don't know. Um, Lady Red, I think, is uh, raising uh, channel points, which I think can be exchanged for money for a charity or something. Oh. But yes. Art, 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 art. Okay, well, we don't want to hold the stream up too long, so we're going to... Shabam, please, I came here to talk I'm about... I'm back. It. Okay, there you are. Let me put that another way. Have you ever been an antique dealer? I knew it. The outfit, the hat, Terry Wrigley, you're him. You were in Defoe Manor. And now you've come here to finish off the ghost. Shaban. I always knew there was something else. 
in this world that were something better, more glamorous, just below the surface. It's called hell. Will you take me with you? Oh, boy. Listen to me. There is nothing glamorous about what I do. I live in shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. And if you pursue any further, you're going to walk straight into one. But what are you talking about? There is something extremely dangerous in this hotel. I don't know what it is, but... Oh god! No! Hello, boy! <laughs> Shabon was out cold, but uninjured. She would probably be safe in her bed while I continued my investigation. Well, good job, Storm. Yeah. And immediately go through her private material. Make Under the sure circumstances, she just like Andy does while we'll probably do wouldn't that. mind. Indeed, a spoop. There were a few textbooks, a half-empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. This was my quarry. I decided. I flipped through the pages until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century and read my discoveries out loud. Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations of the family to the mid-late 18th century until the loss of one of their clippers drove the company into bankruptcy. Owner at the time, Jason O'Malley, placed the blame somewhat irrationally on a shipping crate, which family legend alleged to be haunted. That had been on the ship at the time. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter at Liverpool Dockyards with a very expensive-looking harpsichord, which he insisted be smashed up and the wood used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken to its component parts, in front of his eyes, and the wood sent to be made into crates for O'Malley shipping. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as Jack Freehorn. The Rooms of Jack Freehorn, July 28, AD 1778. This will be you, Wacker. Sir. Trifle have you been wasting your father's money on now, Jack? What does it look like? It looks like a virginal. A harpsichord, actually, in the Flemish style. Quite old, quite expensive. <laughs> well, I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. Oh no. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh, God, I should have known you and your silly obsession. So what devilry inhabits this magnificent instrument? This instrument as a whole is for, er, is for the most part untainted by the ethereal realm. But its keys are what spark my interest. Usually they have, uh, unusually they have been carved from centuries-old English oak. And that's the interesting part. I will not be disheartened by that sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incar or incarnations before being incorporated into this device. I items of furniture, building material. In fact, just over 200 years ago, it was part of a wall. A wall of a certain inn on a well-traveled road in Wales. The unicorn. I'm so pleased you remember. I could hardly forget it, the way you have been obsessing quite heartily over it as of light. Your correspondence persists in filling your head with rubbish about ghosts and diamonds. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down even a small piece of that hostelry. 
I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. And the instrument has had its fair share of mysterious happenings. The usual batch of strange noises, sudden madness, and inexplicable deaths. See sense, my friend. This curiosity of yours for all things ungodly will have no doubt already befouled your remote soul. You are a fine fellow, Wilbur, but you have not <laughs> you have not a drop of romance in your body. <laughs> now stop yeah, browbeating me for inquiring mine and let us take dinner. Yes, yes, yes. He says he doesn't have any romance, but he was talking about his sharp tongue a while ago. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. His first thought was anger, mostly because the harpsichord was an antique, never intended to be played. But then he listened to the haunting, melancholy tune, and felt his stomach roll inexplicably with fear. Who's down there? Wilbur, is that you? Jack Freehorn was a man of modest means and desired little for comfort. The only pieces of furniture to speak of were a bed and a desk. Jack's desk was covered in untidy letters and notes, studying lately. A flintlock pistol given to Jack by his father, the gathering dust ab atop the pile of horse plundons. Take pistol. Jack took the gun with him to confront the intruder. Just as the Founding Fathers intended. Indeed. I need my powdered wig. This son of a bitch! Jack could not take a step further because he realized with a lurch that he recognized... Sorry? The dark figure that sat at the keys. He had read of this strange entity that recurred frequently in the stories surrounding the Unicorn Inn, and the objects that were later constructed from its wood. And he knew with absolute certainty that the tall man would destroy him were he not destroyed first. You won't take me, demon! No, I could have sworn. You, I know you. You've. Oh God! Please forgive me, Your Majesty, for my transgressions. You fuck I am worthless, I... craven fool, not worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself for my offense. I will be yours forever, body, mind, and soul. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Identified himself as one Jack Freehorn. This man will be the same Jack Freehorn who went on to form that bizarre religious cult. A depraved group of paganist worshippers who were spoken of with much derision in conventional society. With my latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the cursed wood gained another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord, and some time before the harpsichord had been part of some kind of hostelry in Wales. An inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? I had definitely seen something in the Clan Brownwyn Hotel that was linked to the, or to the place, but where? I wonder if it was the last unicorn! Hey, Psyduck. You noticed Sigh. something about the room. Sigh. Victim three, Freehorn. The third man who desired judgment was Freehorn, and he brought from those who made luxuries with the wood that was the prince's soul. The prince came and struck down the lover of Freehorn, and Freehorn knew the name of the king. And Freehorn said, I know you now, O prince, who was the arrogant man, and I anticipate your wish, and I will devote myself to spreading the teachings you have brought me, and the love of our king. And the prince was satisfied, and Freehorn called all those who would listen, 
and they formed the, an order of blessed agonies that would work to redeem the follies of the men of technology. And to Andy's point, Siobhan is gone. So, everyone, yeah. it is Gummy's birthday. Happy Gummy Day! Happy birthday. Everyone wish happy birthday. Happy Digs Day to Gummy. Yes. A very merry birthday to you. To, to you. you. Very merry birthday to you. To you. To you. Indeed. Yes, for, so for those who are just joining us, we are continuing on our journey to Spoop Whacker out. Ah, the Meat Hotel. It's the meat. Oh, I just prefer the meat. Oh, I love the meat. Oh, I love the meat. and barbecue sauce. Oh, I love the meat. Oh, I love the meat. From somewhere to the west, I heard the familiar sound of a door being unlocked. Lankman? Lankman, wait. Vankman? <laughs> Dr. Vankman? <laughs> Possibly. Can somebody voice. time out Psydoc for like eight years, please? <laughs> the emergency door refused to budge. It appeared to be jammed. Oh, you need some toast and bad jelly. So, we are going to save real quick, because we are now getting to where we can die in this game. Just go get it. All oh, this look, all oh, this is wonderful. What the hell was that? Conc this concludes the notes of or found in Clem Bronwyn Hotel, August 4th. At the time, Trilby remains missing in action. So, those are meat, uh, meat-eating bugs. Oh god, it's the uh it's the fucking uh it's the Scarab. scarabs from the mummy. <laughs> yeah. Born down area had been conquered by a swarm of greasy black beetles. You need some raid. Indeed. What you need is oh. a horribly tormented soul was still lying on the central counter, limbs arranged oddly from spasms of agony. Take pill. I took another pill and waited for the anxiety to lift, but it did not. To my unyielding, con er, unending concern, I realized that the decay of the alternate hotel had spread either to me or the pills, and they no longer worked. I had Boy! to find a way to restore their effect, or at least another method of calming myself. Maybe consume some of the meat. You're oh, almost sweet. on the point there. Oh God, no! Take the meat. I tore a no. lump. I tore off a lump of meat to take with no. me. No! If I came up against something hostile and carnivorous in this place, it would help to have something other no. than me, myself to offer. Spread no. it among your various orifices. No! no. Oh, oh. no. It feeds the meats. No. So, Psyduck, <laughs> we're playing an existential horror game. All so I can hear Whacker whine. Alright, before you do this, show Psyduck the art. Oh, right, so we are uh, we are spooping Whacker out and... Uh... Psyduck, we have art. <laughs> Wait, I don't have art. These two assholes. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, di yep, did you, you are correct. I, I made it, or, well, I had the AI make it just before. <laughs> Give meat to <laughs> bugs. You son of a bitch. Give me, give meat. Give meat. Oh, look at the meat. Oh, the meat. The grimy cellar had been manned for years. Look at body. At least two individuals had met with sticky ends down here. One of them had been almost completely picked clean by the beetles, the other. The other, I noticed, was heavily decayed except for its hand, which was fresh and pink. I wondered if this had something to do with the puddle of water it was lying in. Uh. The far corner of the room was a puddle of water, created by drippings from or drips from above. 
It had a curious color to it, and the drops seemed to glow with their own illumination. The liquid was having a strange effect on the nearby corpse. No! no. It was almost as if the water was drawing me to it. Not no. like a scabbling thing in my mind, like the chisel or no painting, water. but more like a beckoning siren. Drink it, laugh it up. I couldn't help myself. I crouched down and dipped it in my hand in. It felt uncommonly refreshing Ew. and brought an amount up to my lips, my unhygienic surroundings forgotten. As a <laughs> stupid sexy water, yes. As a pleasant feeling of stimulation, or a simultaneous coolness and warmth spread from my stomach, I realized that the water had some sort of rejuvenating oh, effect. Oh, hell, is this the replacement for the pills? Mm -hmm. I had no is explanation for this, but at the oh, time, okay. I didn't care. I was beginning to feel the back of my mind, the familiar tickling sensation that indicated a reality shift. So I swiftly scooped a few drops of the liquid into my pill bottle, shaking it through the remaining pills. Jesus Christ. The hotel cellar was lit up by a single spotlight and seemed almost completely bare, but for some dusty cardboard crates and a wine rack. Wine rack was severely understocked. The hotelier had no doubt been meaning to refill it. Only one bottle remained, a dusty green one. I saw no reason to take it. Okay. Dill's here! Yep, floor pills. <laughs> it's no frozen, no! Oh my god, really? It's pulling this game on me? <laughs> Hold there. Now we are in a sane place? Look at kitchen. The hotel kitchen was deserted and completely sterile. Whatever happened to the staff, it happened before they had started preparing dinner. I had no interest in the hotel's food storage. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh. A good point. Slice it thicker, slice it thinner. This old window looked out on a rather bare backyard. Can't get back. Bear back. So. Don't mind if I do. No! Andal! Cease! Behave thyself. Psyduck oh. fears Diggs <laughs> is dying. No, Diggs is not dying. He's. Oh, Terry, it's you. Have you seen Shaban? I was about to ask you that. Sorry, this one's yours, Racker. What did you do to the girl? I hope you don't intend to seduce her away from my service. I'll bet I need you to understand. You and I and Shaban are all in critical danger. There's something evil in this hotel, and it's closing in fast. To me, I've been over this hotel several times. Apart from us, there's absolutely nothing here. Please keep your fairy stories in the playroom where they belong. That's what our new comeback to Lorman's going to be whenever he brings up England. Also, please consume a penis, Mr. Diggs. Indeed. Um, <laughs> wait. What? No! Whacker! Behave yourself! Uh, he said so... my voice acting was shit. Mean! Uh, he um, said, he said it sarcastically. Okay, we're going to take a brief pause while I go and uh, use the little boy's room. Bio okay. break. Get water, everyone. Hail hydrate. Hail hydrate. <laughs> Eggs. You know, this makes me wonder what a point-and-click adventure game based off the song of Hotel California would be like. Okay, I mean, for the longest time, I thought that was about drugs, but apparently it's about uh, once you make it big in the record industry. Yeah, I heard that too. I thought it was like, I thought it was like about a cult. It was like when he gets no, down to no, the no, room, no. they're like, 
it's like they're sacrificing a beast with their sharp steely knives and he's like oh shit and he tries to run out of there and then they're like you know you can't get out Psyduck are you talking about the legion because I kind of view it as a mental asylum too I return. No, you don't. Oh, I okay. What... Yeah. Uh, okay. You think there's any ceilings on the uh, ce uh, mirrors on the ceiling in here? Um, I don't know. That's an odd question. Yes. Look at sign. An ancient shield from. Sign from an establishment called the Unicorn, was leaning against one of the tables. Could this have been the same unicorn mentioned by Jack Freehorn? The buzzing in my ears that manifested as I inspected the shingle indicated so. I'd rather you not handle the exhibits, please, Terry. Keep your dirty mitts off of my loot! I couldn't do that just then. Do you know anything about an inn called the Unicorn? Ah, uh, you noticed my shingles. It's all the way back to the Elizabethan period, from what I understand. But I just can't find a buyer for the damn thing. I don't suppose you have any clients who might go for it. Possibly. Do I have your express permission to examine it? Of course. I'm going to have to touch it to assess the texture. By all means, caress it. As long as you're not going to test its strength over your knee or anything. <laughs> the shingle's design was a simple one of a unicorn's head in half profile, painted with average ability on a dark oak backing. Yes, Chocobo. More mysterious murder mysteries. Okay, when they said shingle, I thought they meant, like, a roof shingle. I was like, what an odd thing to keep. You know, like the, the shingles that hang down from, like, a sign. Yeah, post. yeah, the, the old wooden signs. Yeah. As I pressed my fingertips to it, however, the design seemed to extrude from its backing, like a hologram, and seemed to draw closer until my vision was filled with wood grain and mediocre brush strokes. I could vaguely detect the professor speaking to me, on the very edge of hearing, but by the time I realized it, I was already gone. Somewhere in Wales, July 28th, AD 1581. Owen Somerset, a traveling merchant, was on his way back to his wife and family in London, having concluded some business dealings in... Curetting... Er, Cur... Curettingen? The Welsh sticks land to place. Yes. Um... So, you'll be Owen, Andy, and the innkeep will be you, Wacker. Caught suddenly by a summer storm, he spied an inn by the side of the road and marveled at his good fortune. Mate, tis an evil storm that blights the sky tonight. I, I must have had the almighty on my side to find myself so close to inn as it broke out. Oh shit, I need to use a new voice for this. I perhaps... <laughs> the innkeeper seemed quite taciturn, but Owen was in a good mood and was determined for it not to leave him. It was probably too late to continue writing, even if the storm had cleared. Owen decided to inquire about a room for the night. There's a raging horse outside. He keeps talking about music and shit. It won't leave everyone alone. Wait, what? You're mean! Uh. To ride horse? <laughs> Eat horse. <laughs> Make it if you do. His mouth is like. Eh, er, oh, mm. <laughs> Cast room. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Talk to man. Talk to to to. <laughs> this is getting really dumb 
really quickly. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let's try this one. Ask innkeeper about room. Good evening, sir. Would it be possible to secure a bed for tonight? Be a wise amount. Oh. To never return. I uh, what? There is a curse upon this inn. I will not have an innocent doomed to the same fate as I. Oh Christ, he's one of those. I have plenty of gold to pay for my board. The devil cannot be bought off, my friend. What devil? What is it the nature of this curse? This inn was built by my father twenty years ago. From the wood of a fallen oak he stumbled upon an island north of here. Oh, fuck. He noticed human bones scattered about, but he did not heed them. This inn has been a curse on our bloodline ever since. Madness and death claims those who stay here. This lime last year claimed my father. Soon I am certain it shall claim me. Then why the fuck are you still open? Uh, about room. So, why do you remain like the rat ass? even fleeing from mistakes of the past. If the Almighty wills that my family must pay for our errors, then this I will accept. But I would not see another suffer for our sins. Leave now before the shadows take you. Okay, I kind of decided he kind of got German there for a second. Sir, I have little patience for fables, and even less for riding after sundown in the middle of a downpour. Lend me a room, and I shall take the responsibility for my own well-being. You're very sir. Not only will I insist, but I will pay whatever price you ask. Take the upstairs room, and if you remain by the board, you shall pay nothing at all. Oh, goodness gracious, what a queer man. I... I don't fucking get this. This, this is one of the kind of weirder spots. Owen lay himself down, intending only to test the bed's softness, but in his exhaustion, he quickly succumbed to sleep. In the early hours of the morning, something jolted Owen from his slumber. Piercing sound? No. Oh. Piercing smell. Oop. We're not doing smell o vision. Smell, smell. The guest room of the unicorn was little bare, quite functional. Blah, blah, blah. The corner smoke appeared to be rising from the floor. Uh oh. Darn stairs, I could never get them right. Oh. A blaze had been set before the front door. By whom? The innkeeper? Look, fire. Fire, good. Owen didn't have anything he could on hand he could just use to put the fire out. Oh, right. It's gonna make me do this now. Owen took the sheet with him, presumably for comfort. God's name. It's him, the innkeeper. What kind of... Who could have... <laughs> <laughs> Once again, okay. I returned, disoriented from my vision. I was closing in on the source of the madness, 
The innkeeper had said that the wood came from a tree on an island. Could that have been the Clembronwyn Island? Given what I was seeing, it seemed a valid, if worrying, possibility. Besides that, it seemed I had no other leads, so what would I do? I was determined not to let the trail end there, if there were just a single clue. It looks like I have spontaneously combusted. Trilby, I know you are following the trail. Go to the roof if you wish to proceed. Linkman. Victim two. Linkman! The innkeeper. The second man who desired judgment was the innkeeper, who had bought the wood of the tree and built from it his house. The prince came to him and his guests, and he struck the innkeeper down, and the innkeeper knew the name of the king. And the prince turned to the innkeeper's guest, and he said, I sh or You I shall not let live, for once before have I made this warning, and still my soul aches with what is done to the wood. That is my soul, and I will spare no man who injures me in this way. And the innkeeper, the keeper's guest, knew the name of the king. bed um talk to abed hmm okay talk to abed about the girl uh talk to abed about expiring vehicle warranty um what was shaban's spelling again S I O H no S I O H B A N. Okay, hmm. try to re reverse the B and the H. Cyb hone. Like that? Yeah. Uh, no, that was try the other way. C O B H N. Yeah, try that. Has she been turned up yet? I don't care about her anymore. You can make your own choice. You want to run away with an old smooth target and cheap sound. And then we'll be my new assistant. We'll be a better one. Head? What? The porcelain head appeared oh, to be geez. that of a woman. A bed appeared transfixed by its empty gaze. Okay. Okay. What a relief. We thought it was something disturbing. Yeah. So Linkman told us to get upstairs <coughs> to the top floor. You Just know, we keep thought walking. About, <laughs> we thought about installing some elevators, but we thought, you know, a bunch of people have been getting a little chubby lately. Maybe it'd be good for the body. Indeed. We do not they... have enough meat equipment for the elevator services. Indeed. And then Charlie fell down all four slides and he sued us. We lost all that money. So ironically, we can't build the elevator now. Isn't that funny how it works out? Also, having an elevator would reduce the amount of meat since they'd all be thinner. The door was either stuck or locked. Oh. So now we are going to we couldn't even paint the top floor that's how much money we lost i could almost feel the caffeine starting to heat my brain ah! most delightful meat space oh look oh oh my bring her back oh, look at the boobers my. Strangely, there was some kind of dismembered porcelain dummy mounted to one of the walls. Oh no. So, 
We now have our next puzzle. And we're gonna remain in here for a while because I feel like I've been sparing you a little too much of this ambiance. Ambiance! But, but Wacker, don't you love the ambiance? Wacker just wants the meat. The scrumptious meat. Oh, the scrumptious, delicious meat. Delicious meat. That is delightful meat. Made out of mushrooms. <laughs> the Jabroni Hotel. <laughs> Clan Brony Hotel. <laughs> I mean... That explains all the diapers. Ew! Andy, cease! <laughs> the Clay Bony? No, the Clan Brony Hotel. Um... Pick up missile. Take arm. No, that's a missile. No, it's a missile arm. So no, there's a, a random, uh, Digiman, no, no, you bad child. Bad, it hurts. So yeah, we're just randomly finding, you know, severed porcelain limbs. It's fine. Oh, look. Is that another missile? Take, take missile. Um, I believe then. Oh, I remember where the other one is. Yep. Are you gonna have to fight, uh, dipshit for the head part? Yeah, but we'll have to do that last. Yeah, I will say that is the one weakness of this particular entry in the series is the. Stairwell. I hate the stairwell. Yeah. You don't even have a Tifa to go underneath. Wow. I. And Andrew. What? I mean, don't get me wrong, but Andrew. I agree, but. He's out of ride, but. Um. Oh, oh shit. This looks familiar. What's in the box? I don't think it's a box. Is it? Look at Altar. Altar. Those blasphemous rituals that take place here. Wait. An altar is like a box. Boxes are hollow. Just like your soul. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Damn demonic kids throwing rocks through my windows. Those kids from my Christmas. Okay, right, because this is the one you could get stuck in if you didn't have... yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to remember where... The next item oh, was. I need to BRB another one second, gotta check on something. BRB. That's fine. In the meantime, Andy, sing for us! On a dark desert highway! Cold wind through my hair, warm smell of colitas rising up through the air. There up ahead go. in the distance, I saw a shimmering light. My head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. There we are. In our room was another arm. 
But von Falkenstein, it hurts, and you must know the name of the king. Welcome to the Hotel Guantanamo. There you go. But von Falkenstein, aren't we all in this together? <laughs> yes, I have armed myself against the danger. And now Glenn Frey's estate owns the channel. Why, yes. God. What do you think that pervert lying on a table bathed in barbecue sauce is gonna leave? Uh when we make him leave. Oh, I'm not gonna do it. He's icky. There's a leg up on the shelf. I took that leg. Uh, uh, Storm Song got a leg up on life. Ah. <laughs> Whack Daddy has returned. <laughs> Did you get back from the bread store? No. Oh. Ask so you were just bed, loafing around. Head. <laughs> okay, so this is probably the most unfortunate thing I've said all stream. Um, may I borrow that head, Professor? <laughs> oh, I <laughs> see. You, you took one companion of mine away, and now you won't take another. Can I have a little head, Professor? But it's just a head. What could you possibly need it for? Can you, you don't understand. Can no you one me understands head, me. <laughs> Go get me a drink, then we'll talk. <laughs> Okay, fine. Oh, God. I'm Sharonry. But Sharonry. Indeed. Very mature streamers. Pro streamers. Diggs will be so pleased with the content we are making for this. Yes. Are you saying that he couldn't bear it? He'll have to grin and bear it. Speaking of bear it, might... we may be playing another game later. I think he could, uh, what? I took the wine. Perhaps this would appease the drunken professor upstairs. There is no appeasing that. Yeah. Look, the man sims for porcelain. There's He's a whole nother level of, like, elite. You're at the fridge. You know how hard it is to find a porcelain head with an open mouth? Yep. <laughs> God damn it, Andy. I'm trying to see if I can trigger something here. I mean, I'm getting triggered. <laughs> I'm good, so. <laughs> okay. Um, if you do it right, you can get some weird visions now and then. Professor? Where's he going now? He's so. been nailed to the ceiling by bone spurs. Oh. oh, no. Oh, God, no. He shifted. Um. Um. Look, Abed. That's, uh. Abed's drunken misery had caused him to shift into the dark hotel. The jolly man whom I had grown fond of lay decapitated. On the floor, with Shaban's disappearance, I was truly alone. The professor had known nothing of the horror. He was blameless and ignorant of any manner involving Defoe Manor, or a cursed idol. But it seemed my dark captor cared little for these facts. Why haven't you killed me too, you skinny bastard? If you can do it so easily, so quickly, why don't you, won't you face me? In a display of a warped sense of humor, the porcelain head was sitting where Abed's old one had been. Uh, how do I sp Take head. I pulled the head out of the stump, trying not to think about the cracking noises this caused. And just in case, we are going to save here, because we are starting to get to... 
some more stuff. Save before getting head? Why, yes. So, fortunately, it looks like we'll be able to close this one off today and then do the last game on the next stream. And hey, Whacker, guess what? No. The next game is no. just as long, but has twice the meats. No. And, and twice the beats, if you know what I mean. No. <laughs> How do we spell attach again? Hey. Yes. You know, after doing this stream with you guys and seeing how Storm Song has been having trouble spelling certain words, I feel better about myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Andrew, go get your dick sucked by a shark. Uh, that's not as fun as you think it sounds. <laughs> how do you know that? The body was intact. For reasons I couldn't explain, I sensed that... Something had changed back in the real world. What kind of ridiculous locking mechanism is this? Man! Not man. So yeah, some of the weird shifts you can have depending on... And you can only really provoke them if you take longer to play this. Like if you're new at this and you don't know what you're doing. Um, so, like, there's one where you'll, uh, wake up and you are in the, uh, steel coffin in space. There's one where you'll walk through the door and you are, uh, now John Defoe. Oh, my uh, God. Storm Song. We need to play, like, uh, a Delta Green or SCP game where, like, you shift in and out of the different dimension if your insulin is low. So you gotta like have that little yeah. thing on your arm, and you We're have not to have playing fetus game, dude. What? Fetus game. The fetus. Oh. 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 I arrived. At? I thought you said fetus game. I was no, like, what the hell, whacker. Take page. Glen Bronwyn Island, July 28th, 1501. Sorry, I'm just turning the music down. I'm tired, father. I thought you were clever at Vestgis Island, you boy. I need to see some good change. Don't expect again. Why you won't keep on being sentry yet, come? Father, look at those stones. Do you think you they, were, they were was once a house here? It might not. It was we all be anywhere, but it didn't matter. This is our Father? Oh, something right. troubling I just you, Father. I left your mother in the oven. Oh. It starts crying. Where am I? I? Must have shifted in the dark world during the vision. Jimmy! Shaban? Oh, thank God, I thought I was alone. What happened to you? I don't know. After you knocked me out of my room, I woke up and everything was like this. The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. It's my proper fault, mate. That was a horrible man. You know him? Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How did you get past the doll? What doll? Show me what the hell's going on? I told you what would happen if you followed me into the shadows. This isn't your problem. Take these. What are these? 
tranquilizer pills. Take one. When you calm down, the hotel will go back to normal. Won't you need them? I don't need to run away anymore. Shelby, wait! What are you going? I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Perhaps I can find a way to end this. So I was right. The cursed wood came from Clem Bronwyn Island. But what good does that knowledge do me? In a second, I never got around to reading the letter I took under, from under the rock. Trilby, I'm very close to ending this. Meet me in the hotel basement. I must show you my discovery. Lankman. The other page was another one of those religious papers. The Book of Victims. Victim 1, the woodcutter. The first of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the woodcutter. He who had the axe that first felled the tree. The prince came to him and his son, and he struck the woodcutter down. And the woodcutter knew the name of the king. And the prince turned to the woodcutter's son, and he said, You I shall let live, for you are young and are of the innocent, and that you may go among your people and tell them what I will wrought. And the woodcutter's son fled and told all of what he had seen. But the men of technology are arrogant, and his words were unheeded. So, the boy in that vision is uh, the innkeep who burned to death. You following this, Whacker? I mean... So, the boys warned everyone, but how the fuck did the curse follow him if they didn't take the wood with them? Um, or sorry, he's uh, he's the father of the man who ran the inn. He, they would later use the felled wood to create an inn. But yeah, no one listened to him, and at some point he probably decided, well, if they're not going to listen, then maybe I am just crazy. It was a deer that did this to my father. are gone. The grimy cellar had been abandoned for some time. Someone dug Howard a hole in the foundations, the large enough to admit man. Okay, so we are going to save here because this is the last place where it's possible to die. Well, that, this, all oh, this looks very nice. This looks very I was, I was in some kind of cavern dug out of the rock beneath the hotel. It seemed to be in a constant state of flux, pulling back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. I was certain that the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. This was it. I was certain. The remains of the tree that Boyle and his father had er, cut down. Its wood being later used to construct an inn, a harpsichord, a shipping crate, and an idol. I could feel that same scrabbling in my mind that I had felt just before all of my visions. This time, it was the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. Clam Bronwyn Peninsula, July 28, 55 BC. Kabadaf, a Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague Galdan, who brings news of the invasions of Angsley by the Roman, Suetonius, Paulinus. Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Kabadaf lives in solitude in the remote forest clearing, and prefers... He has a wife, you know! ...and prefers not to travel himself. <laughs> no, Andy! Kabadaf, Galdan, you bring news? The foreigners have landed. They could not be deterred by our sorcery. All is lost. Oh. Certain are you. The they are making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you out here will be brought down within days. 
I'm sorry, Kapadeth. And the great druids of Angsley bow easily to this brash foreign power. Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? You know of my dealings with the ethereal realm. I know what you claim. That there are some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you, Kabadath, can somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside and I shall explain. Kabadath, what is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elementals. But there is one spoken of, only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon, a most terrible of them all, who strikes fear even in the most unflappable creatures I have spoken with. A pain elemental, indeed the only pain elemental, ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. An invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day, the day when the boundaries between the realms are weak, and he glimpses our world. To bring him through at that, or at that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have it defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I awaited your return. All that remains is the summoning. Kabadath, it pains me to see you build your own hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death and by the light of Belenus's gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts to mark your path. I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bid or bind you by your true name. Shazo. By the gods. I have reached out to you across the void, Chazo. I command you by your true name. Show yourself. Kabadath, please stop this. Show yourself. By Tutus. It's huge. It's larger than I anticipated. But Chazo must obey the rules of magic. It is bound I can command it. No! It's far more powerful than I thought. Galden, help me! Forgive me, Kabadev. No! Galden, I beg you! Don't let it take me alive! Chazo, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Kabadath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chazo ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. By then his body was warped and his mind long fallen into soulless dementia. He was Chazo's, utterly and completely his slave. Truly, Shaban, you were supposed to leave. I couldn't, I just... I've had Professor. He's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they will kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of the reality shift. The stump is what's causing it all. How? It is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The acolyte of Shazo. Lankman, 
Nice to see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Cabadath's. Infusing the poor retard with Chizo's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Chizo had waited 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between realms. Over which Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You are not with the Ministry of Occultism. Who are you? 200 years ago, the Prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown and watched and waited. It was only in recent years that events foretold in the Book of Chizo began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe, and it mentioned you. Me? You are the one prophesied to guide the bridge keeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe have to be destroyed to create the bridge, body, mind, and soul. You only destroyed his body, his soul, and his mind remained. If I'd known about this, I wouldn't have even done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and to fulfill your foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? They were... Or they thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you would understand that the prophecy is real. You honestly believe I'd join some insane cult just because you handed me some leaflets? Personally, now. A knife in my gut brought an explosion of ice-cold agony. I heard the pitter-patter of my blood on the rocky floor. The pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. I awake to find myself splayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. So how's this for a turn? Woo. What what Yelp rating would you give this hotel whacker? Uh, I I I no. I awoke no. In, <laughs> no, in my no. in my injured no, state. Man. I could barely move my limbs. My limbs refused to respond. I was weak as a newborn. Thank God. Oh, good, you're awake. I was afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After your staggering ineptitude in Defoe Manor, the Order need... Or, the Order needs to nudge things along. We need a connection to Jizo to help administrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity you have all year to summon the Tall Man. You're going to bring that thing into our world? The standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering? After he takes your life, he will be grateful to us. And then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? He won't be. Men like you truly die on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away from one measly knife wound. Hush now. Cabadath is coming. He, so he stabbed you with his steely knife, but he just couldn't slay the thief. Indeed. I could only see a small portion of the wa wavering cavern. I could see the idol of John Defoe on the stump beside me, and my bloody waistcoat lying discarded in the corner. With my other senses, I could detect the presence of Shaban and that redoubtable Linkman. My 
My attempts to move made things worse. I felt a stab of pain. Something snapped behind my eyes, filling my vision with spots. I call thee, Kabadath, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north. Now, Wacker. Wacker. Why? Have you been listening? No! Yes. I call thee from the south. The pain was replaced with an ice-cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was swimming I, before my I eyes. I, I don't know. What were you saying, Andy? I was just wondering if he's paying attention. No. I was gonna ask if he had an idea what to do. Oh. From the, or I call thee from the west. It was becoming harder and harder to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzz saw. Reality shifts from realm to realm, tormented and confused. End this madness that we might bring thee to us. Not yet, but I was pretty close. Don't stop, I'm so close. End it, Kabadath. <laughs> My vision was clouding up on the edges. It seemed like my stubborn will was the only thing keeping me alive. I died. I present thee with blessed agonies. Body, mind, and soul. I present thee with the guy failed in his duty for thee to judge. Um, come. What? He's dead. No, that's not possible. Master. Master, please, no! I mean, what the fuck did you expect? Go back, Trilby. Leave me alone. I'm dead. Not yet. Not fully. Your mind and soul are drifting apart from your body. With enough power, there is still time to pull them back. But you must have the will to return. Forget it. I've had enough. I did these assignments, I made myself useful, I lived to the reputation Defoe Manor gave me. Today I gave everything I could, and still I died. There is still work to be done. You have not yet completed your duty. I'm sick of duty, I'm sick of prophecy. Just let me sleep. Stronger men than you have tried to fight destiny. None succeed. Past, present, and future are all different faces of the same die, and few can see them all at once. But I can, and the future demands that you live. Return now, I have marked the path. Please just let it end. Pleading to me is useless. I am just as much a prisoner of fate as you. The future your actions are destined to bring about is already taken place. Without your part... <clears throat> would not be here to restore your life. To you, so you see, my mere presence, your decision is already made up. Who are you? A murderer, and a madman, and a puppet of forces neither of us could possibly comprehend. Trilby, say something. What? 
Oh god, I didn't even know it was doing it properly. But I did it. You're alive. Where's Lankman? That tall man took him. He did something horrible to him. And then he took him away. Where's my waistcoat? Shh, don't talk. I've already called for an ambulance. Let's get you back upstairs. Wait. See that wooden idol? Yes. Bring it with us. Wrap it tightly in clothes and bring it with us. Don't let your t uh, touch your bare skin. Okay. And now it sits across from me. The reality ship had cleared up and we were free to leave. An STP cleanup crew arrived with an ambulance. No trace of a bed or the hotel staff was found. Officially, they've been classified as unexplained disappearances. Lankman and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which does not surprise me in the least. Shabon signed an official secrets act, and last I heard is staying with her parents to recuperate, which just leaves me to write up my notes with that idle that haunts my dreams gazing at me from across my desk. I was dead. I can't pretend I wasn't. No amount of CPR could have brought me back from where I was. So who did it? The man in red? Who was he if not an insane hallucination and brain death? Unimportant. I am alive. And that's all that matters. Just that and the destiny of this wretched statuette that I am apparently fated to carry out. Every instinct in my being wants to burn it to ashes and grind them into the dirt, but I do not. Lankman spoke of a prophecy, that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him, and his order summon their dark god. So if I destroy the idol, they win. What else can I do? I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it leaks malevolent influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option is to hide it. But where can I hide such a thing and ensure that it is never again found by human hands? I shall have to think about this. Trilby, 29-7-1997. Launches it into space. Yep. And I believe we are in the last scene here. The fulfillment of the prophecy continues. The ritual for summoning Shizou will go ahead. Events have been set into motion that cannot be stopped. We have the blood of the guide. Now we must wait. Wait and prepare. And so ends Trilby's notes. At this time there came from the land of technology a man, and through his wisdom was great and his power advanced. He had the willfulness of his fellows, and so he was the arrogant man. And on the eight and twentieth day of the seventh month of the year, the arrogant man, the king, gazed upon the land of technology and saw the arrogant man who spoke thus. O king, I beseech you, for this land has become corrupt without your benevolent hand, and all darkness seeks to envelop us all. I demand of you to cross the border between our lands and make things right, for my power is great, and I have in my power to control one even as great as you. And the king was rightly amused, for while the arrogant man's power was indeed great, the king's power was greater still, and the king said, I will not submit myself, for firstly my power is greater than yours, and not yours to command. Secondly, while my capabilities are many, it is impossible for me to enter the land of technology. For the border is dark and a treacherous ocean I cannot will away. But I will do this for you, O arrogant man. For all the bigness of your head, you are still small enough to be spared the rigors of the dark ocean. I shall rescue you from darkness in the land of technology, and you will live in my household. And here you will learn humility. And as the king said it, so is it so. And the arrogant man crossed the ocean to the house of the king, where he was brought before a majesty, who said, 
Now you must repay me for your slight. Your arrogance caused me. For despite your insult, I love you as I love every man and beast. And you must learn to take this love into your heart. This isn't the kind of love we want. And the king took the body and mind from the arrogant man and separated them from his soul. And this he placed in a great tree in the land of technology, and with this action he announced, Now you are the tree, and the tree is you, and the wood is your soul, with this gift of separation from your body, shall not wither or die throughout your lessons. But should any man interfere with the tree that is your soul on the day that is mine, I shall lend thee power to confront them and strike them down with fitting vengeance. And then he touched the arrogant man and filled his heart with his warming love, and the arrogant man became the prince, and he knew the name of the king. And the prince and the court of the king bowed down, and wept and sang the great praise of the name of king, the king, for generous and great was his wisdom. The Book of the Prince, Chapter 2, The Books of Chazo. So the druid became the... The tall man. Prince. Oh, man. And now we're just on credits here. <clears throat> yeah. So, I always suspected that mm. if it's okay to talk, I always yeah. suspected that knowing the name of the king is you're in pain and suffering and agony. Or you're dead. But any of them. I don't I don't know because the, the concept is like once you're dead, there is no more pain. So he, I would I would suspect that they would, and also you know the the tall man doesn't die. He's like the tall man now. He's like an immortal weird eldritch being that doesn't die. Yeah. It, I think you know the name of the king means that like the king has enacted his will upon you, whether that's death or pain. And to Mister yeah. Jiggle, it's very much in the same vein as the Scarlet King. This is very much SCP such spookies. Although this was actually written slightly before yeah. SCP became a thing. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is way before SCP. Yeah, like... SCP starts in 2008. This was written in 2003? Question Matter of fact, the tall man is before Slender Man. And if you can look at him and see some commonality. Com commonality? Commonality. Commonality. So, how you feeling, Whacker? Uh... <laughs> we have made spoopies for Whacker. Uh, Do you like time travel horror shenanigans? Uh, uh, yep. Uh, uh, but yeah. Uh, Asshole thought he could summon great god of another plane, and God said, lol, I'll put you in a tree, lol. And then that tree became a problem. Uh, STP is Special Talents Project, yes. Wacker's having an eloquent day, says UNC Summer. I don't why I don't, don't want to... Well, ladies and gentlemen, me. we shall learn on the our name of the king. stream the name of the king. The ultimate Wacker fates... Wacker knows the name of the king. And we oh, will I learn don't. the ultimate fates of Trilby, know. of Trilby, of John Somerset, I don't wanna know. and another man. No, why yet? And we shall all know the name of the king. No. Wacker knows the name of the king when I slap his bottom. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well then. <laughs> the cheese grater. Oh god. Okay, so. Oh. We have, the flat end. We have one more game. And that is Six Days a Sacrifice. Okay. And we shall commence that next week. Upon <clears throat> the day which is the king's, and the wood which is Wacker's soul, and he shall know <clears throat> the name of the digs. <laughs> the name of the digs! For the arrogant man thought he could call the digs into his stream. But the digs could not be moved across the ocean of discord. And the digs did take Wacker's soul and put it into the ground, and then he buried it. And he looked at his hands, and he says, Help, help, help. My, my hands are bleeding. Help. Oh. Wacker has a woody soul. All right, well, that is <laughs> <laughs> that is all we have for you all today. Uh, remember to stay tuned for Halzakar in about an hour. And you all have yourselves a wonderful time. Anything you guys have to say before you go? I don't like, I don't want the floor meat. You know, I always knew Wacker's bark was worse than his bite. Oh, piss off. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, yes, uh, 
that does make you the false digs, Digiman, and you shall know the name of the Discord admin. All right. Well, we love you all. Thank you for showing up and join us next week on the Storm Song Show. Toodles! Yay! Yeet! Yay.